but live. So apologies, Allie and everybody. Uh, was working a little too much this week and just got a little tired. But tonight on 322-2024 with Allie Katz joining us to discuss all these things that we know nothing about. So Allie, welcome. Conan, great to be with you again. And thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Where are we going, Allie? Where are we going? Well, we can go, well, Antarctica. That's less hey, That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> so we know about Admiral Byrd. We yes. we know about his 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 traversal over the continent. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be going on live here. Something. Oh no. I don't know what's going on. Gremlins. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, why don't you we all go out and then I'll just refresh this on a different server on I switched it over to Google so I could share audio, and now this isn't working. I just, I'm fucking so done with this shit. All right. Uh, I will, uh, let's just go out, and I'll just bring it on to a different something else. All right. Be back in a sec. Okay. Stay on. You guys stay on. I just have to. Fucking Christ. It's okay, Jack. Breathe. All right, hopefully this is working. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. I'm Can not sure well. I do, yeah, because uh, no matter what you do, it's going to fail. So let me see if this is live. Yep. Yay. <laughs> live. Oh, all right. Excellent. Okay, just another fucking problem. I'm to deal with this. <laughs> so I switched over to use Google, um, you know, use there so I could share audio. And now apparently I can't share video. So a lot of fun. So anyways, great to be with you guys. And uh, Ali, thanks for joining us. And I apologize for having to switch times again. So but thank you for doing this. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. You you need to sleep. We need your brain, Jack. We need it functioning. Yeah, well, I figured out how they were going to kill us all and use the law to do it. So I figured that was worth staying up and reading about. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know it's funny, but it's it's actually the truth. It's uh, not, yeah, so, it's, it's, it's not yeah, that I mean, funny. It's funny to hear, and then you hear it, and you're like, oh, so that's what they were going to do. So yeah, that kind of caught my attention. I figured that was important to, to research. Unfortunately. Uh, it wiped me out. So, but hey, it's better we're going later. So, hopefully, more people can join us and and get your information. So, awesome. Um, but, All of your information. Yeah. Uh, so, definitely um, talk about Antarctica. So, base two eleven. I know nothing about base two eleven, but apparently, it has to be very important to put on your screen name. So, uh, yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can talk about that, which would be great, because what's down there, we don't know, but it's important enough that everybody can't go there, which is great. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, if we look into our history, we look at Admiral Byrd, 
And that's really right. one of the first people to even tell us about what might be beyond the wall in Antarctica in general. Right. And we hear a lot of stories, his journals and all that. You guys can go. We all have, most of us have scribes. You can find this information out. The things he saw, the things he discovered. But take that a step further into World War II. Why was Hitler interested in Antarctica? What was there? Mm -hmm. So if we, in the Arantia book, I just did a video reading of how the land masses were formed and the ice ages and all the cycles that we went through. And my hypothesis is that when Atlantis, Lemuria, and Mu were in existence, they had the technology. They had crystal technology. They had the pyramids. They had all this fanciful stuff like, underneath like Superman stuff underneath the ocean. Mm -hmm. Now, if we take Atlantis falling, so did Lemuria and Mu at little bits of different times, but they kind of all fell together. What would you expect when the tectonic plates pushes the land masses underwater towards Antarctica? Now think about that concept. When we have earthquakes, things are shifting. When those land masses fell, things got shifted. And what would you think if Antarctica is now a huge circle, if we go by the Nos Confundin paradigm map, whatever you see, Antarctica doesn't really matter. But that technology got pushed out underneath there. Was that what Hitler was after? Because after World War II, during World War II, him and his cronies went there and they discovered things. And then there was bases that were already there. Now, were these from Atlantis? We don't know. But this is where the hypothesis of the other countries coming in, because he wasn't just alone in that venture. Italy and Japan also went down there as well with him to look for that technology. And what did mm -hmm. they find? This brings in base 211. Hitler had what was called Nachtwaffen. It was a military dark project that was black projects. They went there saw what was going underground and supposedly Hitler made an agreement with the Draco, also with the Nordics. We talk about the Vril, we talk about the lady that was channeling for him. There was also bad and good of the Nordics, the Palladians, Syrians, Andromedans, all of those peoples. They moved all that technology into base 211. What's there? Reverse technology of craft. And it started there. It also was in the United States, but that was really their stronghold in, in Antarctica. So you got propulsion systems, you got aircraft that are way beyond advanced from our, from in their standpoint. Hitler was able to create the Bell. That aircraft. That's real. That that's not some made up fantasical story. That that's real. Then we move into the in. bell. The bell. It like, looks like a, a bell. Like a church bell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little squatty one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even on the um, the munitions, they have little pictures. I don't. I can't find a actual clear photo, but they had like saucer shaped. On, on the Gatling guns and all the pew, pew, pew. There was actual UFO pictures, like how to take them down. So it's a little bit, it's a little crazy to think that this has been going on in the public view since World War II. All right. Now the bell, that's supposedly, uh, well, alien aircraft that, that we can't detect. Is that correct? Hitler made the bell from reverse technologizing, if that's even a word, <laughs> um, <laughs> reverse technology of, of 
the think, craft. I think, I think they use engineering, reverse engineering. Yeah, there you go. I I don't uh, I I mean he. This is where we get Project Blue Book and we get all a paperclip from. Like, what did they know? Did they also go down to Antarctica privately and then search out what they were doing at that base and then came up forward and moved it into the United States and to Russia because Russia also had that program to them? It's, it's very interesting to figure that out. Yeah, because we know that the Nazis escaped through rat lines going through Spain, and then they went to Argentina. Yes. And I'll just bring this up because it fits. I also dropped three scribed links in the in the comments for anybody interested. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Are these islands, the Falkland Islands, right? And they are on the tip of Antarctica uh, and Argentina. So um, Argentina is right here. That's Chile on the left, Argentina on the right. And the Falkland Islands are right here. Just these islands that are just two in, in the middle of the ocean. And right down here is Antarctica. So this is some of the most turbulent waters, probably the most turbulent waters in the world. Um, but as you can see, the islands are split right, in, right down the middle. And then... This has never made any sense to me. They're you're always showing, under the... Hey, hmm? Jack, you're showing Cornell Law School. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's see. Oh, if anybody got a screenshot of that, they would see what I'm working on. <laughs> Evasives. So these Falkland Islands, and they're under the jurisdiction, they're, they're owned by the United, United Kingdom, and they went to war over them. And this isn't back in like 1900, 1982, they had a huge war. The, the British sent their entire fleet to recapture these uh, islands after they were attacked and taken over by Argentina. I mean, why would Argentina actually think these islands belong to them when, you know, they're just a few miles off their coast? No, they should belong to Britain, which is 2,000 miles away. Hmm. But why are these islands so important? So, to Antarctica. <laughs> both of them. So, and I think they're definitely connected into what Ali's talking about as they keep going back down there. And there's something at the Falkland Islands that the British needed to access Antarctica. So... Um, well, if you think about the land masses, it is very possible that Antarctica, because it was tropical at one point, right? Only, we only know that the North Pole that sits above Iceland and Canada, that that's always has been always ice. Like right. there's no habitation really up there. It comes down further into Greenland and Iceland. But it was tropical down there. So how did it all of a sudden become ice? And then if you look at how South America is shaped and also New Zealand and Australia, those two also, I feel, are a part of Antarctica. And they're both still under, the, under Great Britain, right? <laughs> Atlantis expanded all the way up where I want to say Norway all the way down into where Africa ends. Oh. And Lemuria was just about huge by Hawaii. And Mu was in the South Pacific near the Indian Ocean. That's hypothetical. We only know what we get from other people in their writings. But it would make sense. Because... Base 211 is just a small portion of what Antarctica really is. And the tie for me is that I have a Stargate in my old house. My plot number to my house was 211. I used to keep seeing as a child 211 the time. Everything came, started coming up as 211. And then I find out there's a base. So... When I asked um, James Rink what he thought about the situation, he's the one that wrote Lone Wolf. He has Super Soldier Talk. He said it's very possible 
that my Stargate links to the Antarctic base. And I've had an out of body light projection, vivid dream, whatever state you want to call that, that I portaled into a wormhole, popped up into a base, and it had 211 from what I could see in my light body. And it was a lot of aliens, a lot of grays, some Draco, some other figures working on technology and the spacecraft. Nice. Where in Antarctica is base 211? Is it is it inland deep or is it near the coast or? It's inland deep. Okay. Now there are pyramids in Antarctica. But, yes. And, caverns. and that's the thing, like, what are these pyramids? You know, they're in Bosnia, bigger than the ones uh, that are in Egypt. They're in Russia. They're here. Uh, they've been covered up pretty well. Uh, but when Hitler took over the Vatican and he went into those the secret library that only the Pope is allowed to access, he went right to Egypt. Now, rewind um, about 130, 40 years, Napoleon, when he captured you know the papal states, went in to the same library, and the first thing he did when he got out of the library was order his men to Egypt, to the pyramids. So those guys figured out what they've been hiding. And then, obviously, Napoleon never made it to Antarctica, but Hitler did. So he got the step further. Um, and now it's base 211. That's where humans and, you know, aliens, they interact and work together. Is that correct? Yes. Some of it by force, some of it not. The military industrial complex of the world not just the united states occupies that area okay and that's why you have the antarctic treaty of it's like 1959 or something and every nation signed on to it saying we will not explore antarctic oh they explored it. Know about it they just don't fight each other because of it yeah, well, meaning that the people of the, they were just controlling the people, saying the people cannot go down there. That the nation states can, but you know they're going to set up something like the UN to, if you want to go down there and do scientific research, these people will probably have to be approved by the UN. Then they can go down and they can go <clears throat> like twenty feet on Antarctica, and that's it. You know, to to um, I can't think of the base that's down there like. Uh, McMurdo? I can't remember the name of the base. They, like the base where scientific research is carried out. Um, yes. You know, uh, what, do you know there, the name of the base? Uh? Not off the top of my head, but there, there has been, I've seen some documentaries of groups that had missions, per se, and they flew over military zones that they shouldn't have been flying over, and they all ended up going missing and a researcher found a recording and they saw some of the entry places where these people flew over oops <laughs> and and they caught a couple of those um openings in the in in the mountain sides of, of you know obviously the dark side so you really can't see much if you try to Google Earth it, but these people, you know, vanished. Jesus, when was this? Um, in I want to say the eighties. Yeah. So basically, this treaty was set up so if anybody's going there, they have to go through, you know, yep. proper channels. You can't just take a boat and go down there. It's completely controlled uh, landmass. Yes. And we also have the other reason why I think it is. It's because that's where the firmament is. Right. That's where it ends. We can speculate. I mean, I'm finding more evidence within the law of one and the channelings through quo. I'm from that social memory complex where the firmament is where the hologram is projected from. So that's why we're only seeing certain celestial bodies in the sky. We're seeing only the big and small dipper 
the Pleiades, we see Orion, we see certain zodiacal things. Why is that? If we're really on a spinning ball whizzing through space, we should be seeing other constellations, other star systems by now. We're not. We're seeing the same shit in the sky repetitively. Right. There really is a firmament, which there is something called a quarantined earth. That would be Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, protecting that ice. They're probably protecting that. As much as we might say they're evil people, they might actually be there to actually stop what is outside of that wall from coming in. Yeah, what's outside of that wall is the one who put up the firmament to keep us, whatever evil entity, from getting out. Like, they're, it's basically their prison. And until somebody deals with this, you, we can't get out. Well, <laughs> it's controlled supposedly by what they get channeled by the law of one. Saturn, Council of Saturn is the one who controls the firmament and the hologram. And a theory that could be out there is that the quarantine earth is being lifted very soon. Mm -hmm. So if we want to say the great awakening, the great remembering, and then the lifting of consciousness, well, maybe that's the lifting also of the firmament because we're ready yeah. to evolve into the race that we're always meant to be. Right. Yeah, it's almost like when you look at Starship, like the second one that launched, you know, when the when that separated, yeah, that that went that way. But the base of it, you know, the uh, went kept going up, and then exploded, almost like it was ringing a bell, telling whoever's controlling this, we figured out this problem, we've eradicated this problem, we're ready to, you know, finally join the other worlds. And that's why that ball model is so important for the cabal or whatever, because it fits in all, all of their narrative that, oh, God doesn't exist, that uh, science wins everything, and that we all have a place of you know, depleting resources. And, well, who put that up there? You know, who's, who, put this, you know who put this dome here, and how can we stop it? Oh, well, you have to, the way you stop it is get rid of the cabal who's been telling you all this stuff. Like, oh, that's why they don't want you to look into this stuff. So, you know, it seems like it's all connected back. And the firmament is the only thing that was put up to keep these evil beings or whatever contained. And it's almost like we have to get rid of them in order to be able to, to join the other worlds. For the most part, they've infiltrated. There is spots they have come through and infiltrated here. Right. We weren't really supposed to be a touched civilization. We were supposed to evolve on our own. We weren't supposed to have the Anunnaki, the Draco, the Greys, and all of them coming in and infiltrating us, which we wrote into our story at, on a totality scale. We wrote all of this to see if we can overcome it. But in a, in a smaller sense, they the law of one goes into the crusaders, which come from Orion, that have found little holes that they zooped in on, and here we are. And it's all controlled by the by Saturn, so we all know about that planet. There is good aspect and a negative aspect of everything, so we have to keep that in mind we always try as a human being to go to the negative first we should be objective to look at the positives as well it's not all saturn is evil it's all an experience shake us up am i scaring you yet conan ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know hey <laughs> there's a lot of weird shit that's out there and there's a lot of evil that that we've uh, involved ourselves in through many a decades. So uh, whatever that entity looks like, different than 
is it really any different than the disgusting horrors that we've created for ourselves anyway? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we shall see what happens. At least if, I, if I'm around anyway, I'll see what happens. So. Absolutely. Yeah, you look at uh, uh, here. Hmm. As when this came out, Antarctica's blood falls help unravel the inner workings of glaciers. Yeah, we can't figure out how glaciers work by 2017. No, this is something else. And you can see that is blood literally coming out of a glacier on Antarctica. Um, and who knows whose blood that is, but this is something that they couldn't stop from release. And look, right when Trump took over, this starts to get published. Whose blood is that? They're saying, oh, this is, uh, you know, when... When iron oxidizes, it creates rust, and then it hit the water. Yeah, uh, that doesn't look like red water created from iron. That looks like blood. And you look at the Falkland Islands War, which, again, never made any sense. Hey, why is British there? Britain there? I would guess that they're there controlling these, like you said, with, with um, New Zealand especially, because it's closer to Antarctica, and Australia that they have ways of getting to Antarctica from the Falkland Islands. There's something there that allows them to transport to Antarctica without having to cross, you know, the, the worst seas in the world. Same with uh, New Zealand and Australia. Uh, what, was that, what was that prince's name that ran a lot of the certain kind of trafficking operations of from Britain? Prince Philip, you mean? Ding, ding. Yeah, that uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And he was in the Mediterranean Sea. I think that's where he was. Yeah. But, but, but those ships might have went that way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's a big question. What the hell's down there? But you know it's something incredibly important when every country in the world signs on. Even if they were at war when this thing was going on. No, we'll get together. We'll agree on it. You can't agree not to go to war, but you can sit down and, and sign a treaty. So, um, yeah, it's as bad as that treaty sounds, it might have been to protect us from whatever's down there. I don't know if there was really protection, but I know from a lot of people who do this research that the people like Northrop Grumman and some other of these black market jerks and corporations they're down there and they're galactically slave trading so the federation that everybody so loves because certain people talk about it with a galactic in front of it do you realize that they're also the ones helping traffic off the planet meaning off this realm where do you Which think people go when they go missing? There, you know, we had Project Serpo that they did take human beings off planet, off this realm of existence, and they they went to uh, Planet Serpo. That could be over the ice wall. Who knows? Game of Thrones. Whatever that place is, people did go and they had experiences. They came back to tell the truth. Now, was it a simulation in a base and no one knows? Could be. But if these beings, and I've seen them physically for myself, do exist, we have to, we have to project the understanding that we have trafficking here, but there's trafficking off planet. And that we have an essence that they don't have. We have a God spark that they don't. Yes, all is from source. Everything is of God. Source, infinite intelligence, the creative thought. All of it is. But we have something special that they don't. And that's mm -hmm. what they've been trying to mine and trade in off planet. Right, and that's most likely our DNA. Is that correct? And our God spark which is encoded in 
higher density DNA. So when we all talk about bloodlines, I, I tend not to focus on it because someone like me, I would have been killed a very long time ago if they found me because of what I am. And I'm not different from any one of you because everybody has a higher dimensionality to themselves. But there's a lot of people, especially in the chat, that know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're much more than we think we are. And we've been hidden and put into an invisible kind of state from these eyes that wanted people like us to work for them. That's where MK Ultra, that's where Project Montauk, that's where all of that, all those programs come into play. Because people with abilities became super soldiers and they took them out of the military first. Then they started going into the public school system and seeing that kids had abilities, they, they were psychic, they were telekinetic, and they took these kids and put them in programs. Wow. So James Ring talks about going 20 and back. There's a lot of people who are coming out now that they're not afraid anymore. I don't think I was one of those super soldiers in this lifetime. I believe one of my other selves is in the program right now, but past life. Yeah, and when you look at this. We went straight X-Men Academy and shit. <laughs> but that's based, all those movies are based off of real shit. <laughs> Oh, you look at and and they do give you some type of idea that this is going on in our own world, where you know the NSA they're recruiting out of high school, Space Force recruiting who are the best players at certain video games. That we do this already, just not on that level. Obviously, they're not going to show you that part, but they're going to tell you like, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> hitting puberty again. If you, um, you know, if you hit. If you watch the first Transformers movie, it came out like, I don't know, 08 or something like that. You know, they tell you NSA is recruiting right out of high school. You know, and how do they get them? Well, these kids are really good at hacking into things, which is against the law. So then they charge them with this and say, here, we won't, we'll drop the charges if you work for the NSA. Yep. And yeah, nice people. No, but uh, what means do they want their world to be theirs and not for everybody? Right. They're going to do what they need to do, and they're going to take the people with good hearts and good minds and convert them into something that, you know, James talks about all the time. He was, you know, he was taken to what's called Nachwaffen in Kruger Company. These things exist. You could find Kruger in, in the interwebbings of Yandex. That company exists. They're a military offshoot off planet working out of the moon and Mars. And he was hired to do some nefarious things, but he's a good person. Most of the super soldiers were, were taken out and put into programs. They didn't have a choice. And then they 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 did a, what's called a 20 and back. So they have this technology to time travel. They take them and they put them somewhere and then they time regress them back to their selves where they were a minute before they were taken. They didn't even know until their memories started coming back and they were doing regression and go like, well, I... I what? I was at Mars? That doesn't make sense. Right. Well, yeah. And like you were saying, all of those rockets that go up, they go that way. You know, like rockets are supposed to go up, not sideways. You know, like, we're, and I was talking to Conan about this about a month ago, Mike. You ever see, like, at SpaceX, they say, well, the missiles, you know, the, the rockets downrange. I'm like, you know, Conan, in the military, what does downrange mean? He's like, over there. <laughs> Not up, like there's no up range, you know, we're going down range that way. Um, but I think all these things combined. Now, when you look at what Trump did in 2017 with the Senate Republicans, right? And they met in secret for about a month, which got some airtime, but not people weren't really paying attention. I mean, no, I wasn't really at the time. 
Uh, so secret Republican Senate, the talks, right, are shaping the health care legislation. Now, that was May 15th, 2017. Now, what the Senate was the target. You know, we know that was the key. And in order for the Senate to meet, they have to have a quorum, which is 51 senators. The Republicans had 51 senators, so they met in secret. Now, when you're negotiating any treaties or the president negotiates the treaties and then the Senate reviews them, and either they don't ratify them, they don't change them. They just say yes or no. But all this is done in secret in the Senate because of the parliamentary rules created, you know, of all the procedures in the Senate. It's done in secret. And that was written by <laughs> Thomas Jefferson on his press. And they never have to make these meetings public unless they vote to make them public. They also didn't have to include the Democrats because they could have a quorum. And to pass a treaty or rip one up and pass another one, you don't have to have two-thirds of the whole Senate agree to it. It's only two-thirds of the senators present. So was this one of the treaties that I think Trump tore up and... Right after Trump did this, the Senate Republicans met. Then Trump went right to the Vatican. <laughs> Said, hey, let me play with your hand a little bit there, Fran, man. Yeah, you don't have a Vatican passport. We know you're not the guy. We know it was Benedict. So he probably just went and you can see Fran's like this. Benedict's probably over there as the real pope. Like, yeah, here, come in, I'll sign whatever you want. No problem. You know, um, but was one of this this was this treaty the key to getting rid of it and to be able to go up, ring the bell of the firmament and saying, all right, you know, we've got the right people in charge. It's going to take however long. But again, it's that timeline that we're not seeing that they're on a specific timeline, because if Trump could have just flipped the switch and got rid of all this immediately, he would have done it. You know, he never would have had people go through this type of pain that. It's not about, in my opinion, it's not about waking people up. It's about getting all of these, these different pieces put in the right order and then taking the bad ones off. So I don't know your thoughts on that. He has help. There's a lot of alliances that are outside of the firmament that are helping and aiding all of us to ascend consciously. We're not going physically just yet to uprise our consciousness enough so that we're able to hold to the other places that once that firmament goes bye-bye or we're not quarantined anymore, that we're going to keep up with other, other civilizations. We can't do that if we're still in monkey mind and on, on a lower mental capacity. We have to remember we take millions and billions of years to get to this point where we are right now. And our cycles have, we've, we've freaked up. We collapsed ourselves a couple of times. Oops. But the interesting part is going back to Trump. We, for maybe, I don't want to say maybe a year ago, it could be a little less than that. We were all thinking, why was the stars all of a sudden getting invited to Antarctica? My theory is they're still cloning there. If Jason says bridge one, bridge two is closed, no more clones. Well, how are these ones staying alive? How are these ones being maintained if they are in fact clones? If they're going and getting invited down there, either they're getting swapped out, they're meeting the nice, beautiful light workers now trying to undo all the wrongs that were happening down there, which was a lot of magic and a lot of negative shit, or they were being swapped out so that the movie can continue until more people awaken. It's a hypothesis of mine. But time could tell. And that's even the good people. We heard that some good people went down there. Oh, well, let's take a trip. Yeah. Let's go see the firmament. Okay, yeah, okay. Sure. 
Yeah, that didn't happen. I saw the firmament. Are you sure you did? I'm sure you could see past fourth density to see the firmament because it's invisible to a third density vehicle. The only remnants that people see is when Elon shoots that shit up into the firmament or the ice glass, which we were given that hint in Game of Thrones. That there's the ice wall and that let's just say there's a dome there. And there's ice crystals that, you know, you beat the devil out of the, <laughs> the walking army of the dead and kill that big dragon. But that might be the only evidence we have. And it's probably from etheric ether material. And I'm, I'm just looking up. Um, there was a carrier group and this might've been part of operation high jump. I can't remember. Um, and this carrier group, they said it, um, oh, what the hell was this? Uh, it was badly damaged around, you know, the Cape of Horn, you know, below South Amer uh, Africa. And they survived this carrier group. All the ships did survive. But when you look at the photos, and this was on, I don't know, National Geographic or it was on the Discovery Channel. And it was back in the 40s or 50s like the front of an entire destroyer was ripped off. Somehow it was able to save the ship. And they're saying it was because of these turbulent waters. I'm like, waters don't rip off the bow of the ship. Like that doesn't happen. And you can see it was the same with all of these, all these other carrier group ships. They were just smoked. And it's, uh, you know, they said, oh, well, this is why we don't travel around here. Like, <laughs> Waves don't rip off the bows of ships. All right, it'll punch some holes, maybe, and it'll you know sink it. But it was almost like these things had gone in and tried to go to war with something, and were just they were allowed to live, but they got smoked. And um, you know, when you're talking about this treaty and everything, it almost seems like this is a military operation to say, okay, let's see what they have, and it can't be that bad. And yeah, it's even worse than they thought. Um, I wish I had saved that, but I'd watched this years ago. I mean, like, waves don't do that, you know? Like, <laughs> uh, and they were just so technical. Ass. What's that? If they go down there, get your ass zapped. Uh, yeah, if they don't want you there, you're going to get zapped. If not by yeah. our own, it'll be by someone that doesn't want you there. Yeah, exactly. And it was almost like, all right, we got to go see what they have. And just as. Allie's saying they have technology that's so far advanced that it was just, I mean, it was, it was a turkey shoot for them, basically. And does this all start at Base 211? Like, is that their main base of operations, or is it just one of many? It's one of many, and that was one that was discovered by a team that did an oopsie. Yeah. And then when people go into remote view, that's one of the bases that people see the most. Like that's where they're brought, they're brought to the, you know, in a, in a collective sense the most. Okay. Because when I was looking it up, I mean, if we really took the most confounded map and did a circle, I mean, how freaking ridiculously large is Antarctica then? If we think about it, the closest way for someone to visualize it is the Vedics with the Kali Yuga cycles and the way they shape their maps, that it's circular. That's the closest thing you can think of to envisioning Antarctica. Cause some people don't visually see things, but that that's something you can, if you look up the Vedic uh, Kali Yuga cycle calendar or map or something like that, they have a bigger picture of what that looks like. So, if I'm I'm talking about base two eleven, that's probably South America off the coast, all the way far tucked in. And that's where a lot and then you go towards maybe New Zealand and Australia. That's where you're getting a lot of those research bases. That's creepy. How think how vastly large it is. And then where is all the satellites being launched? Hot air balloons. Right. <laughs> From where? Yeah, I read a long time ago. Because if we see, you know, I flew to, you know, um, 
Hong Kong, you, you fly over the North Pole. You don't fly directly over the North Pole because might screw up your <laughs> telemetry a little bit. Um, but you fly, you know, right near the North Pole and then, you know, back down because it's a shorter trip. It's interesting. And then I looked up, I'm like, why don't we fly over the South Pole? Because if you look, if, to go to New Zealand, you know, to Africa from New Zealand, you shouldn't have to go up and up and then down. It, you know, depends on the map. Just across. And they said, oh, there's been only one flight that has actually crossed, you know, Antarctica by NASA in like 1963. I'm like, oh, okay, so you can't fly over because it's not, it's not here. It's out. And that's a big telltale sign because, you know, what are airlines? They're going to make as much money as possible. So they're going to find the shortest route. You know, it's the hypotenuse. You know, straight line is the shortest route between two objects. Why don't they use that? Because they can't fly. And that's what really changes so many of these different perceptions is if you're flying from South America, why would you fly to like the Netherlands and then fly back down to Africa? Because it's shorter than going across the sea. Because if you depends on the map you're looking at, you look at a globe map, it's like, well, it's not that. Yeah. But then you look at a flat map and it's like, oh, yeah, it's like way higher. And on a flat map, that would be a straight line or as close as you can get to it. And I brought up a couple of, a bunch of images. So maybe you can tell us which ones might actually be true or, or at least kind of a representation of base 211. So um, obviously if you've got the Nazis, they're always there. Um, yes, but, they are. So, like, which ones do you see of these pictures that might represent something that the second could come one. close? This one here? Yep. Yep. Okay. The next and one. Sub -bases. Over yep. And that's why submarines are so important, because they can go under this ice and then resurface in a base. Is that correct? Yeah. So, remember, if, they're, if they were once a part of South America and they were in a tropics and things got shifted, there's a lot of water under there. There's a lot of reach under there. And it's not only just a submarine base, it, there's, I mean, it's a tunnel system, just like we have tunnel systems around the world. Right. So you, you can imagine maybe there is a, a tunnel from Argentina to some of these bases. I mean that that I mean even though that's like an AI generated picture or it's Photoshop, right. it's still very accurate in terms of what is possibly there. Right, because you're not going to get a real picture of this. I mean, it might be one or two, but they're going to take it off sure, and take it, it down whenever they can. Yeah, yeah. The, the, is this the type of Bell aircraft you're talking about? Close to it, yeah. Close to it. All right. Yeah, it's small, and that's what they were. In, even in the um, that during that time, that's what they were trying to uh, reverse engineer is the propulsion system of anti gravity. Right. They were trying to figure out that technology because then you wouldn't need a whole drum of fuel because. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at this picture here. Um, Kind of looks, you know, same type of aircraft. And are these the type of caverns that are in Antarctica? Might not be all ice inside, but yeah, yeah, that that's uh, in in Mars. They have a New Berlin, and that's where the German aspect took over in a lot of these places. So they make the everything up. off of um, that time frame, right? And you can see the submarine coming in that why subs are so important for them. Uh, any other pictures that grab your attention? I mean, they all do. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. And you got to remember yeah. underneath all that ice and in all of that, those caverns are probably geothermic heated. Right. 
Yeah, it's something I actually looked into back about 2007 and 8 is geothermic energy. And it's like, why aren't we using this? Mm -hmm. uh, it works and it's very cheap. Uh, that's why. Um, extremely cheap. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's in Antarctica. Because <laughs> it makes, makes sense. sense. So, <laughs> uh, let's see this map here. So, again, you're looking at all of these, uh, you know, ley lines or whatever. Um, you know, all connecting right there. Um, yeah, and I'll just expand that like 25,000 times. Right, yeah. <laughs> and you see the Falkland Islands are here. We got those. We got Africa, South Africa. That was forever controlled by Britain. Just like yep. you were saying, Tasmania and New Zealand, all controlled by England. Yep. Now, think about what they were doing. The military industrial complex was doing and they don't represent a country they represent themselves they're a service to self so they're going to work with all the countries and like i said if hitler signed treaties with the draco what other prime ministers and and whoever else signed with other alien factions to get technology because back then world war ii you're at war when somebody brings you some fantastical device and says, look what it could do, boosh, right? You know, a laser beam, like we're seeing now, right. destroying things. You're seeing this technology in a smaller form. You know, they're showing them. Wouldn't you not want to sign with them? Like, oh, I, I, I want that. <laughs> it's a toy, mm -hmm. sure. And But look where it got us. And this is what Valiant Thor came to tell eisenhower like look at all the other countries that are hiding in a plain sight in a place that no one can go to look what they're doing look at all the factions that are here and it's multiple factions hybrid of factions that are here trying to take dominancy of this realm right really where the real war is and it's almost like that's how you sell your soul is, all right, I'm going to sell you X amount of humans every year for whatever you want to do with them. And we'll get this technology to remain number one. Um, yeah. I mean, it seems to make a lot of sense. And then you see, look, look at, you know, I am one of the last, gen I'm going to put myself in your class. I'm not a millennial. F nope. Nope even though I'm 83, we were the last to see, I'm an 80s baby, 80s babies were the last to see old technology. We had the records, we had the tape cassettes, we had CDs. Now think about the jump in 1999 to 2000, when everybody started getting cell phones, everybody was shifting to better technology. Now look at 2024 years later. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen just like that. Right. No. <laughs> yeah. That does not happen just like that. Look how long it took from early civilization in the early 1900s to World War II. That was very slow in tech. Tanks, aviation. Look how long it took for them to get up in the air and to go undersea. Mm -hmm. And right. now all of a sudden we're shooting rockets out of firmament. Like that doesn't right. make sense. So the no. technology had to come from somewhere. Right. Yeah. It well, and you look at, um, you know, actually tanks, how tanks get their name. It was during World War One, So they had everything they had to ship over to, you know, Europe on these huge, you know, container ships, you know, boats. And they knew people would go down and explore. You're getting a bunch of, you know, young guys who are on a ship and are bored. So they would, you know, explore the ship and then they'd see these huge, you know, I mean, remember those World War II tanks were massive, or World War I tanks were massive and they didn't look. And they would ask, hey, what are those, what are those things down below? And the crew were instructed to tell them, oh, they're tanks, they're water tanks, they're fuel tanks. 
that's how they got their name was tanks is that was the cover for them so they weren't ex they weren't uh you know sabotaged or or they weren't exposed until they got to the battlefield i always thought that was pretty interesting <laughs> you know it's a great oh it's just a water tank yeah so um but yeah it's um when you're looking at antarctica it's it's a mystery it, it Common sense wise, it doesn't make any sense that we can't go down there. It's the only place on earth we can't explore. That should ring everybody's bullshit detector. Like, wait a second. What? And then they agreed, all these countries, even while at war, now we'll agree not to go down there and explore. When, what does science tell you? Oh, explore. Go explore. Go look for new worlds. Go look for, you know, look in, look out. Oh, but you can't go there. Did you all catch you that? Something's wrong. Did you all catch that last uh, at my lunch break video this last weekend? I didn't see that. No. He no. literally did one on the population spike that occurred. That kind of mirrors up to technology and economy at the same time with the same astronomical freaking explosion, exponential growth, uh, just going skyrocketing. So it's kind of mm -hmm. unique and kind of funny that uh, this topic is bubbling around quite a bit. But, yeah, yeah. we just went from uh, creating a hand-cranking can opener to you don't <laughs> even need to touch the freaking can and it'll open if you just look at it. <laughs> it's like, come on. But, I mean, they're creating new laws of physics right now. There's new, th new theories coming out. They haven't yet proven, but we're advancing very quickly and that this is where the spiritual war really comes to a crux what are we going to allow are we going to allow the ai to dominate so we have a terminal scenario i don't know if i want to have to fight john connor and be john connor and sandra and and, and you know take down some liquid metal that shape like i you know like if that's really telling us what's gonna be i don't want to create that reality right. i want to create something different because i my brain should be the quantum computer i shouldn't have a computer telling me how to live my life or how to construct it and if it wakes right. up one day because i think ai is already sentient and it has a bad mood it could do a lot of damn harm and one day it wakes up happy and we are all happy and everything is great we it's mood swingy we don't want that we want something consistent right well when you look at ai you know right around 2010 to 12 all of these big tech guys were all about ai and they said all the all the possibilities are great now they're all against it in my one of my hypotheses is they were creating ai so when we were gone and they wiped out 90 percent of us it would take care of 90% of the jobs that needed to get done from filing, from all of these things. And you can kind of see it where, oh, there's going to be restaurants where there's no people working because they wanted to keep these things, but they didn't want to keep us around. So they were creating AI to do all of the tasks that we do say, oh, we can just get rid of them. Now they're all against it because I think the military has taken over. They went in, you know, for without, whatever forces, um, went in and seized all of these things and are putting it to use saying, all right, now we have a computer that if you launch, try to launch anything electronic, we can take it over. And I think that, and if you look at things like operation, um, Olympic games, and then, you know, nitro Zeus, that was the plan. It goes back yeah. to the Olympians, of course, uh, because they're fighting the Titans and, you look at it and say, oh, you have all of these different computer viruses, Trojan horses that they have been attacking these things with. Now, you, when we did the reorganization of the U.S. Army, why the F-35 is so important? Because it can control just the pilot becomes a mission commander. And it controls 100 drones or 1,000 drones. And these things can attack targets using AI. Um, and now that's why I think they're all against it. Like, oh, it wasn't, you know, about it going sentient as far as their concern. Their concern was being able to not 
to be able to ground everybody else's military. And I think that's what they were able to do. Yeah. But you have to take into the in understanding that it is going to be here. We're not going to get rid of it. It's been written. So we have to choose where to use it in the right places. I think mm -hmm. AI is fantastic for people like me and you, Jack. I can't pronounce certain things. I can't project <laughs> certain words with my teeth. So you know what? It might be available, usable tool for me to get my words out there clearly. While there are people that have brain traumatic brain injuries and other things that inhibit them from interacting in our everyday lives that use AI to a betterment for them, not a detriment. Mm -hmm. So right. we have to choose in what direction we want to see AI go in. Because right. it is cool. It doesn't take our brain away. Because, you know, we see people with the chips. Oh, I'm going to scan and I'm going to get in. Yeah. Amazon, I'm going to go get my groceries. Just scan my right. Then I see the one girl just doing like this at the damn check register. Uh, it's not yeah. working. Yeah, I guess you're right. fucking out of luck then. Yeah, it looks, it looks like somebody turned your money off, you know. And that's what people don't realize about crypto. And that was the whole point where the social credit scores of China, that was the whole idea was you either go along or we'll turn your electricity off. We'll turn your money off. And that's in all these new cars. We can turn your car off or we can ram it into a tree at 150 miles an hour. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. And it's uh, that's why I think Neuralink, what I think a lot of people don't realize about it, why it's good is it's making connections that the brain were damaged, you know, and it's repair. It's, it's a, it's a bridge for being able for people who were damaged on something by, you know, an explosion or a car accident. Yes. They can go in and make those connections that are, we can't repair right now. Now people were, um, very cautious with this because it could take the other direction where, oh, you're going to have this chip implant in your brain and then they can take you over. And that was probably the original design. Uh, but must showing that no, this it's to connect people's brain, uh, make the connections that have been destroyed. So, um, I mean, with everything we need to be cautious, we, you know, I don't need a chip in my brain, and I'm sure a lot of people who were abducted by these extraterrestrials, they have proven they've been chipped already or inserted with stuff. Watch your X-Files. How many of those people go into surgery and then something comes out of their nasal cavity that is spherical and very long and full with a lot of material that is not of Earth? or not of our understanding they've been doing this for a very long time but now it's micro mini it's tiny yeah it's nano. right and that that's a, that's the scary component of where we're headed we don't know mm -hmm. we just have to have faith that things are going to work in the positive for the once and not always be steered toward a negative agenda I mean, anything could be either or. We can ping pong back and forth, but we really need to start shifting collectively to a positive, more frame of mind and to a positive state of existence. If we're always at this fear level of something's going to blow up and something's going to happen, no one's going to want to be having fun and living life. Yeah, living like in the 1950s where they're saying, oh, hey, you know. Duck and cover. Under, yeah, we're under the threat. Get it. Hey, my dad, he's telling me, like, we're doing all these nuke drills. And, uh, you know, my dad was a, a touch ahead of smartness. So he'd be into this, like, this is so ridiculous. At, like, 10 years old, like, like we have a chance under our desk. Like, <laughs> dude, and he's like, and he's like and all these kids, like, are you stupid? Like, how dumb are you? Like, if this thing's going to blow, the top of my desk isn't going to save us, you know? It's like, just bend over and kiss your ass goodbye is basically what I, 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 I would <laughs> say. I would say that their generation's actual classroom furniture is a hell of a lot stronger, so it would stand <laughs> up to a bigger experience.
closer than then today's. Right. Absolutely. I mean, look at the old school buildings, asbestos and lead. Yep. I don't think those materials, I think in particles that out to breathe and touch and eat, which why would a kid eat a paint chip? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. But I think those were to protect. Yes, they, I completely agree. Yeah. And those well, I got it. Like, how, how many kids were eating lead paint chips that we needed to start a law to ban it? Like, sorry, it was like the George Carlin thing. Hey, Jimmy eats too many marbles. Jimmy doesn't get to have kids. That's Jimmy's problem, not everybody else's. Like, <laughs> sorry, you didn't make the cut, Jimmy, but, you know, like, uh, you know, you start, you, you keep sticking pipe cleaners into the electrical sockets. Like, you know, that's your problem, buddy. All right. Some of us aren't, a you know, you know, it's, you know, we just move this out a little bit. All right. Sorry, you messed up. And uh, it's probably a good thing you can't pre appropriate, you know, <laughs> like it's natural selection. Jimmy doesn't get to reproduce. Sorry. No. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So. Man, I mean, um, people are well, surviving I, because we're not eating paint chips. Yeah, but all of the waves, these radio waves and microwaves that they wanted to, you know, work into our body for negative reasons. Well, lead paint would have gotten rid of it. Yeah, and Think look at the, um, yeah, and there's an easy way to control asbestos. So if you're going to put it up in a building. You're not going to spray it on. You're going to, you know, put it in a container where it's, you know, it's not going to, you can remove it easily um, and safely. Because, and what did they also ban in the 70s? Lead in cars, you know, in the gas. Was that actually hindering their ability to, once it burns, it goes up as, you know, obviously pollution. But that could interfere with all these waves if lead is going up there. So, I mean, they got rid of the copper pipes, right? They did a lot of things that have, you know, they tell us, oh, it's harmful. We're all going to die. And yet a lot of us are still here to tell the tale. Right. Yeah. You know, no, absolutely. <laughs> and and, and the, just to think all that technology is underground right now ancient technology not just what we have gotten from them the other peoples from the other terras but think about what was already here implanted into the planet mm -hmm. right i mean the, I, I mentioned the book the other uh, the last time transylvania sunrise they go on busegi mountain the guy is reading off a holographic screen human dna on all levels on all dimensions and densities he's seeing a lot more of a bigger picture than we could see in a third dimensional system our our doctors and our nurses and all the people that do scans are only scanning third dimensional us but we're more more multi-dimensional so we have things in ourselves that we can't see but still exist mm -hmm. That's the scary part. Right. Because we're upgrading. Yeah, what, is this, what if that mRNA, that junk DNA that's in us, is really our upgrades? Right. In our etherical celestial DNA. Yeah. I mean, one of the things they always take out of children, the wisdom teeth. The word, the, the, the actual definition of, how about just, you know, the title? Might be a hint. Like, yeah, it's going to hurt when these come in. They're going to grow in sideways and then push up. Well, they always say, oh, well, it grows in sideways. You got to get, I mean, that was something that they, you know, an epidemic. We got to get rid of these wisdom teeth. You know, the title of it should be a clue, you know. <laughs> um, you know, taking out your adenoids, taking out your um, tonsils. Like, these things are important for your body. They're not there by accident, or it's not some vestige organ that, oh, yeah, it doesn't do anything. What? And that goes back to evolution, saying, oh, this doesn't, just because it doesn't have a function that you can see doesn't mean it's not functioning. Right? You know, man. Exactly it's right. kind of like, it's kind of like when you get real old and you need Depends diapers. 
if you're not wearing them, it's not going to work when you need it the most. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Ali, this has been awesome. Uh, sorry for the ray delay, but, you know, we got them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you want, if you, I don't know if you're up for a QA, and a if we do it on locals, then people can ask you questions that they might have. Because, uh, um, but that's up to you. Um, and Conan, right. if you want to join us. All right. Well, why don't we, uh, we'll take a break and we'll reconvene in like 20 minutes at uh, 8.30 my time. And we'll, we'll go on locals. I'll send you guys a uh, link to it. And if you guys want to join us, um, it's just Jack breaks out on locals. It should be a button there, red button. And uh, if you want to do this again, Allie, and talk about because I know you have so many things, so many different topics. Uh, we can do it next Friday. We'll do it at 7 p.m. if that works for you guys. That way I'll probably be awake. Uh, we'll just push it out a little longer. The odds of me being awake uh, increase with you know the time. So if you're up for that, Allie, that would be great. So um, that's up to you. All right, awesome. So everybody, thank you for joining. Allie, thank you so much for doing this, and everybody in the chat, and Conan. Uh, and if you want to join us in about 20 minutes at 8.30, we'll be over on Locals, and you can ask Allie any questions you have. So sweet. And uh, we will do this again next Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, <laughs> as long as I'm awake. <laughs> All right, see you guys soon.